Well, hello everybody. Good afternoon. We've had a couple different things change today. I filmed this video, the intro to this video, like three or four times, but uh, this is what was going on now. Just got back home and I was going to take this new bird to the next job, but we ended up working a little bit late, so it just made more sense to go get it from the last job and bring it home. And uh, we'll run up there and show you guys what I got to knock out. Now, I don't know when I'm going to see this machine at home again or any of the mulchers really once summer hits these things pretty much they stay job to job so uh, i'm going to come up here show you guys what the plan is just give you a glimpse of the house because people have been asking about it and then we're going to come back down here and i'm gonna give a uh, first job review on the tl12 how i thought it handled and let me just look at the, all this brush i got here i don't want to take out anything i don't need to i want to thin it down for fire danger yes and because well my fire insurance we got a heck of a deal on it and they required some uh serious thinning so i'll cut to a picture uh before right now of what this looked like i spent about an hour with the chainsaw and then we spent about three cutting out the firewood and making this mess right here so there's the house i know what you guys are thinking what the hell is wrong with that color I thought the same thing too, but hey, it came with that shop, so we're cool. So this is what we're up against today. This big old brush pile. I was trying I started doing windrows down here, but it just got it's got worse and worse. We filled up my area down here and I thought, you know what the heck, I'm just gonna pile it up here. It was raining and I wanted to go get pizza. So we'll run up to the house real quick now. I don't want to show too much of the house to give you guys, you know, any ideas, you know, case in the joint, you know what I'm saying? But I'm hoping the insurance, they allow me to keep these. I'm going to call them heritage oaks because that's, uh, that's a good little boundary border ish area. Come on, Boone. And I want to put a lawn right here. It's already had one. I came through and mowed it, but just cutting down these trees added like 70% more lawn space. I'm gonna come up in here and grind these down and then this bush right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna see how the 12 does against this. This stuff is just some stringy crap right here. So I'm gonna go inside, get a drink, and uh we'll get started here. <sighs> Alright, it's fairly simple layout. There's pretty much two living rooms, two dining rooms four bedrooms so here's what you guys just saw from out there kitchen area it's a mess moving sucks we'll come over here to the fridge and we'll grab what we're after here gotta have the essentials grab one of those grab one of these all right let's go talk about the machine okay fine i'll show you the living room just a little bit there you go bedroom 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 Came with a shot. Whatever. Come on, Boone. All right. Sorry for the long-winded intro about the house, but I just wanted to show that. Some people, they wanted to see it, commented below, and so there you guys go. If you guys didn't know or knew the channel, just bought this place, and well, let's go ahead and talk about the TL12. And some things about it that I like, and some things that are a little bit of an issue, but we'll go ahead and knock it out. Love or hate, after the first job, a little hard to tell but so far so good i'm loving this machine it's everything that i'm expecting out of it uh that's the main thing if you're buying a skid steer no matter what brand you get it's a skid steer you cannot expect super duper power out of a skid steer it's a multi-function machine rule of thumb multi-function uh it's pretty much good at everything but not absolutely great at one thing now this thing does push some dirt like a freaking champ so i will say it is a dirt moving hoss but with a mulcher head on it uh we had to do a little fine tuning i'll admit that in the computer you can change it so the head has a different amount of uh percentage going to it when he started up it's 100 percent number one 100 percent mulcher head gets the full juice that's fine get around no problem doing that but as soon as you start back dragging and really trying to throw some stuff it uh bogs down the whole machine the track power gets real weak so it is a loader arm so what i did i tuned it down to 90 ps or 90 uh, percent to the head 
and then the head didn't quite have enough. Uh, it had plenty of track power, but the head was kind of struggling. So I put it to 95, and that seems to be a pretty happy medium with it. And uh, it's, I ran it for most of the job out there uh, at 95% to the head. Now, skid steer, you do have to run these things wide open, no, no doubt about it. Uh, it's a race car. You're trying to get every bit of potential you can out of these suckers when you've got a mulcher head on it. And then uh, I could do a little bit more fine-tuning with the priority valve. I did take a video after I ran it, an hour and a half, two hours, something like that, uh, what the temperatures are of the hydraulic and the engine uh, radiators because this thing has got a just a bar graph showing what the hydraulic temperature is and the engine temp so it stayed pretty cool i didn't have any issues with it normal full throttle get her done mode mulching everything i saw uh and the temperatures they stayed fine so we'll see what happens when it comes summertime but more than likely per everything that we do we put an extra cooler on there keep it running cool as best we can Another thing I want to mention is if you're running the five hose for your mulcher head that has a door or a hood on the front uh, for the, this exact setup, I recommend, because this pressure is way too quick and too much for the hood. It is way too fast. You can put it on a different setting, but the normal setting is freaking lightning quick and it's going to break some stuff. So get a little limiter, put in the line so that uh, it, can't, it can't do that so fast. But these new hoses are the new quick couplers not one drop out of them screw together compared to the standard little clip togethers so those are working perfect um, come back here somebody had a question about what this little button was you hit that button when you're fueling def or fuel and it beeps beeps faster as the more you get full and then when it's full steady beep and another question someone had was uh, why didn't i go with a vertical lift you know the v2 instead of the r2 uh, Main reason is because there's a lot more stuff going on right here and it's a lot more open for sticks and stuff to get in there. Uh, so I didn't like that idea. This one, yes, it is open, but there's reasons for that. That's some good airflow for the engine right there. Uh, when it's running wide open, you can feel a good suction amount of air coming, you know, getting pulled in there as for here as well. And it just kicking it all out the back. This thing, it does a pretty good job at anything that was behind it if you back up to a tree it looks like it's in a hurricane dang near uh with all the leaves and stuff blowing around you gotta watch out for up here the fan for the um air condition does suck down so you know sticks like it's up there they get stuck on there not a big deal I just you know kick it off there but for the most part i'm freaking stoked on this machine uh when buying a skid steer not looking for a ton of horsepower yes you can get a skid steer platform that does have more power than this it does cost more than this uh this thing is not the most expensive machine but by all means it was not cheap but uh just for example asv costs about twenty twenty five thousand dollars more than this and then if you want to step up in the big dog class and have you know a skid steer that's actually got some juice you can go to the new lamb track 6140 but that costs about another 50 grand more than this which is you know you're almost in the next class where you could get a dedicated machine and i'll tell you this right now uh, just the difference to the lamb track to this lamb track just goes off and leaves it and then the prime tech it'll outdo this thing by double so this thing what i have in mind for it is bigger jobs land clearing jobs you can let the prime tech just straight line do its thing just go eat back drag do its thing but when you start zigzagging it really hurts the production of the prime tech uh, it can do it but it's not very productive so if you can do this here get another machine that can zigzag and do all those little things around the trees try to make it look nice that's where this thing's going to come into play because this thing's going to be the rabbit chasing the tortoise and the tortoise is just going to be doing his thing the whole time same thing and this guy can just zip around doing all the little knickknacks that are left behind but for the most part this thing uh you know i did run it before bought this one uh ran same exact setup with the fe head but it had knives and i'll tell you this right now knives are the biggest horsepower compensator ever because driving this with carbides now on it versus the knives the knives felt like this thing was a 180 horsepower machine so if you're basing your horsepower off of something that uh it's running knives <laughs> put your carbides on it so if you're thinking the asv is just a freaking savage which i did run an asv so i got some experience with it it had carbides on it it was a little bit of a beast i'll admit but there are some concerns I had with it and concerns with this, but the list of things I liked more 
we're leaning towards this no problem in my opinion but so if you're running knives a full time put some carbides on your machine and see how she swings because it, it's completely a different game when you got carbides and when we run carbides like this versus the lamp track on the last job is because this thing can zigzag around get some rocks in it from the driveway and not really care because carbides they're gonna handle it but no scratches on it yet uh commenter been mentioning scratches and nope and i did change up my tie down method jim down there global he said lift your boom up and roll the head forward just a little bit and that's another thing that's kind of sweet about this i don't know what the tie down is on a different machine but for instance this one when i lift the boom up and this is in the way i can still open the door on the machine how about that of course you guys would probably say it's got a better tie down spot but whatever we're all on the same team i'm just trying to sp share some information on some stuff that i've been learning but uh another thing is uh on the back here before i forget and we get to work here these are bolt holes that are drilled and tapped for counterweights this machine um, on steeper ground is definitely nose heavy with a 3,000 pound mulcher head on the front so either we're gonna you know just for a little extra safety we'd like to put a winch on the back so it'd have a bumper you know that rules out my you know argument about this thing being awesome which it is i did back up into a tree with it so it held up so we're gonna put a winch back here i don't know if there's plumb for a hydraulics back here but i was thinking of just getting like uh oh harbor freight ski's got like a nine thousand or nine or 15 i think it's a fifteen thousand pound winch i can't even get my numbers right electric job we might throw back there just for you know in case we get stuck and need it in a pinch but um we most of the time have another machine around but just some counterweights on the back to keep this thing a little bit more level i did run the Rayco the other day when it's got its big winch on the back and that thing it made it feel a lot more stable having that ballast on the back but again guys i will admit back in the day before i bought this or any other skid steer i was the thought is this machine uh is a skid steer it doesn't have the power that a dedicated machine does uh they're all about in the same area so hang on my buddy just leaving so you just got to pick your poison but anyway put you guys on a time lapse and we'll see if we can get all that crap mulch up over there <laughs> Okay, so I just got done mulching. I think I made uh, about an hour, 15 probably. Maybe a little bit longer than that. That was some thick stuff right there, I'll tell you that much. It's uh, not gravy business going through that oak branches all stung up. So I got the heat gun, we'll do a new test after I've done a decent amount. That was, as I get the camera pointed at nothing, that was some hard work on it right there, so go ahead and 
Here we go. One, I saw 130. Let's see here. About 138. Look at that. Drops it. Oh, you guys can't even see it. About 100. I gotta find a good spot here. Already cooled off. About 130, 138 degrees. Those were the highest I saw on that thing. But she's champing it out, boys. I'll give it that. It's not really warm right now, to be honest with you. So uh, we'll see when it actually gets to some heat weather. Uh, normally, I wear my helmet with the Cena so I could talk to Dad the whole time. I didn't actually have that or any earplugs. Um, had music cranking in there. Wouldn't say it was super quiet, but it, I mean, it was no prime tech. But it didn't uh, didn't greatly affect my hearing. Feels like I was shooting a 22 or something for a little bit. But got her dusty that round. I actually put some work to her. So there was attempts about 135 ballpark ish, and she's still rocking and rolling. I got to top her off with fuel, but we're gonna go ahead and end this video right now. I'll show you guys the mother nature stealing my pond. Grandma's 12 valve chilling over there. She's down here. We got to get the project rolling on that, but just wanted to get that knocked out. I didn't go super thick with the mulch, or I mean uh, thin. I just let her spray because I want some erosion protection on that rather than just these stupid little ropes. But uh, I got more stuff to add to it right there, so more will more will be added. But let's go ahead and end this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. TL12, R2, Takahuchi, Taka. Somebody tell me how to pronounce that. I, I keep fumbling it, I guess. But with a FAE Mulcher Head, carbide teeth, tramp. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Later.